been talking about fixing this for years. However, just last week, it's come up again as if it's a brand new idea. Hey, I'm Christopher Westfall from the Senior Savings Network, going to talk today about Medicare Advantage and their use of prior authorization. Medicare Advantage is where you give up original Medicare to go into a private system where the system itself decides what health care you get, when, how frequently, and all that kind of good stuff. Medicare Advantage pulls you out of just the red, white, and blue system where you can just go into any doctor in the country that accepts Medicare, lay down your Medicare red, white, and blue card, and perhaps a Medicare supplement, and you walk away, everything's covered, everything's taken care of. No, with Medicare Advantage, they aim, they aim to save you money, save the plan money, and somewhere in that margin between what they have to pay and what the government pays them, they have a significant profit. Medicare Advantage, as many agents will try to tell you, offers the same care as original Medicare. We'll prove that to be false here in just a second. Most agents don't like to hear this. But if you are considering whether you should go on original Medicare, perhaps with a supplement or not, or a Medicare Advantage plan, these facts could greatly impact your decision because as it stands today, and we've been addressing this since 2018 when some great Congress people thought they would get this fixed, it's still not fixed. And this is one of the ways that Medicare Advantage plans make money. Again, their profit lies solely on the difference between what they pay for and what they are paid from the government. That difference, what they can deny care on, that's where the profit margin lies. That's why Medicare Advantage was created to save the government money. And so people will say Medicare Advantage is great. It doesn't cost them anything. And I've never had a complaint on Medicare Advantage except from somebody who was sick. Think about that. Never had a complaint about Medicare Advantage except from someone who was sick. I'm going to tell you about what's new in the news here. This is an article in Economics Online, radiologybusiness.com, talks about radiology is the third among specialties with the heaviest prior authorization burden. And let me just read this for you. Radiology is among the medical specialties with the highest rate of services subjected to prior authorization, according to a new large-scale analysis. And read this part. I'm going to do a search in here. Watch this. I'm going to do a search for Medicare Advantage. And you'll see that that's what's coming up here. That's what this is talking about. Experts from several notable institutions, including Harvard and CVS Health, reach their conclusions by analyzing coverage rules from a large Medicare Advantage insurer. They found wide variation among different types of physicians and how this extra check on utilization, got to check you, is applied. Diagnostic radiology services landed at 91%. That means if you need to go get an x-ray, MRI, anything that falls under the category of radiology, and you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, not original Medicare, doesn't happen there. Medicare Advantage plan, you have to go get someone else's permission before you can have that service performed. Third behind the rates for radi radiation oncology, that's no big deal. That just means that you have cancer and you need radiation for it. 97% of the time, you're going to go need to get the plan's permission first. And while that's happening, you don't get treatment. And cardiology, no big deal there, just treating your heart. These policies, however, do not apply. Oh, look, it's not just Chris saying it. Do not apply in Medicare Part B, which pays for physician care, outpatient treatment, and home health, among other costs. Out of nearly 6.5 million beneficiaries covered by this part of the federal payment program, 41% received at least one service per year that would have been subject to prior authorization if that person were under Medicare Advantage. 41% of people on original Medicare, if they had given up their Medicare for that calendar year, because Medicare Advantage is a one calendar year deal where you sign up for the Medicare Advantage plan. 41% of the people on original Medicare, if they were on Medicare Advantage, would have had to go get permission for these things to have been taken place. That's pretty startling. And you look all the way down here, we talk about one of the Medicare Advantage companies, but it doesn't have anything to do with Aetna specifically here. It's talking about all of them. If the federal government applied the same rigorous utilization tactics as private insurers did, but they don't, 2.2 services per beneficiary would fall under prior authorization annually. That's every year. So 2.2 times a year, the average senior has to go get the Medicare Advantage plan's permission if they need to have something done. 
Now, is that an easy prospect? You'll wait just a minute and I'll show you what the doctors have to say about prior authorization. It will shock you if it hasn't happened to you yet. So this article just came out May 28th, talking about this big burden. It has not gone away. However, there was a bill uh, that was proposed back in 2018, reintroduced in 2019, currently sitting in Congress right now, the Democratic-controlled Congress, and I'll show you how many sponsors it has. It'll blow your mind. And still, it's just sitting there. This is another recent story. This is May 28, 2021, saying that interventional cardiologists back the new prior authorization bill. It's not new. Calling current policies costly and time-consuming. The Society for Cardiovascular Angiogra Angiography, say that real fast, and interventions has issued a statement in support of new bipartisan legislation that would simplify the prior authorization pro process for who? For who? My wife is joining me in my office now for my rent. Nicole, can you read that? For who? Medicare Advantage Plans. Just for Medicare Advantage Plans. That's what we're talking about here. Again, you don't have this in original Medicare. You don't have this if you have a Medicare supplement. Just Medicare Advantage. Is it a big deal? Well, you be the judge. This new act that they're repurposing under a new name because it's a Democratic-controlled Congress now, but the language is essentially the exact same. It's called the Improving Seniors Timely Access to Care Act of 2021, if signed into law, would establish an electronic prior authorization process, help cardiologists and other clinicians gain real-time approval. That's what they want, rather than waiting days and days and days. Meanwhile, a person is suffering with cancer or need uh, back surgery, that kind of thing. They want real-time approval of routinely approved medical services and work to make prior authorization requirements more transparent, among other things. It was reinduced to Congress on May 13th. Prior authorization is costly and time-consuming, said Dr. Henry, uh, Timothy Henry, president, said in a prepared statement. This act works to reform this process and improve patient outcomes. This type of red tape is bad for patients, bad for physicians, bad for taxpayers, and yet it's only found on Medicare Advantage plans. The American College of Cardiology shared its support of the legislation back on May 13th, and they all signed on to this uh, statement, which I'm going to show you here in just a second. This is from the American College of Cardiology. The ACC supported prior authorization reform uh, that's re been reintroduced. Now, a couple of things that this bill does they would establish, now they would not do away with all prior authorization, otherwise it wouldn't have people like AHIP signing on to it, that's the American uh, Health Insurance Plans Group, that's a big uh, proponent and actually backs Medicare Advantage. This seeks to establish an electronic prior authorization process and make it quicker, it streamline the process, and ensure that they're reviewed by quality medical personnel and, right here, protect beneficiaries from disruptions in care due to prior authorization requirements as they transition between Medicare Advantage plans. Increased transparency around MA. They don't want to say, they don't want to call it Medicare Advantage. Increased transparency around Medicare Advantage prior authorization requirements and their use. Hmm. This process, prior authorization, is time consuming, burdensome, and of no clinical benefit to the patient. In fact, the time spent on prior authorization takes an average of two days each week by physicians and their staff. This is a quote from the doctor here that runs this. This is time that would be better spent taking care of patients. These hurdles not uncommonly lead to delays in medical care for patients. In order to help preserve the patient-physician relationship and in order to streamline care, we are excited about the transparency and oversight that will be brought to the Medicare Advantage program by this act and look forward to working with Congress and other parties to make the system better for our cardiovascular patients. Why can't they just fix it themselves internally? Why do they have to be told by Congress to fix this? So here's the consensus statement. These are the organizations that have signed on to the new plan, the new version of this prior authorization bill. American Hospital Association, AHIP, that is every year we have to take a test through AHIP, and that talks about Medicare marketing rules, everything about Medicare Advantage for which we have to certify every single year for Part D drug plans as a Medicare professional. That's all run by AHIP. 
the American Medical Association. Stick around in just a minute. I'm going to show you what the AMA says about prior authorization and how impactful it is on patient care. So all these groups have signed on and talked about they need to reform it. But again, they're not talking about doing away with it. They could not do that. They want to selectively apply prior authorization. Hmm. They want to speed up prior authorization. They want to make it electronic. They want to make it more transparent, but they don't want to get rid of it. There's this other story I've been covering lately about city after city, starting with New York and Nashville and going across the country. These cities are saying that they can no longer afford to take care of their retirees. They, like General Electric, IBM, and many before it, had promised AT&T and others that they would take care of their retirees by giving them good quality health care all through their glory days, through their golden years. And yet, they come out and say, whoops, just kidding, we don't have the money for that. So we're going to put you into a private plan that saves us a whole lot of money. Recently, I covered how New York City was doing this to all their retirees. And it's not going over very well. But I want you to see, particularly in here, as they're talking about moving to Medicare Advantage, what a doctor says about Medicare Advantage. And they're considering going between original Medicare and a Medicare supplement, which they have right now. And by the way, if this is a huge caveat that you need to know. If when you're starting Medicare, you choose to go Medicare Advantage because it's got zero premium, it's wonderful, you just pick a doctor, you go by their plans, you pay copays, you pay copays. Later on in life, if you decide, you know what, I want to go back to original Medicare, as many people do, there's a recent study that showed that more people that are non-white, that is black and Asian and Hispanic people, are trying to get out of Medicare Advantage more than any others. But if you try to do that later, Outside of your initial election period on the Medicare, you have to qualify to get back onto a Medicare supplement. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to try it out, Medicare Advantage, for a couple of years. And after that couple of years, if I start needing some care and I have to run into these things like prior authorizations and denials and appeals and things declined and my doctor's leaving the network and the hospitals leave, I'll just go back and get a Medicare supplement like I had that option when I was 65. They don't tell you that when you're turning 65. Next year, I just saw the numbers. The commission for an agent like me in California, New York, will be $750 to sign up a senior on a zero premium Medicare Advantage plan. That is one heck of an incentive to put somebody on a free Medicare Advantage plan. Do we make that much if we sign up a senior on a Medicare supplement? Absolutely not. Not even a third of that. It's insane. So the incentive on the agent is to bring you one option and one option only. If you're watching this, I know thousands of people are probably saying, my agent never told me anything other than Medicare Advantage, and we hear it all the time. So let me share with you this debate going on in New York, talking about the retirees and what they're going to be able to uh, look forward to. And we're looking down here, um, they want to see 250,000 retirees and their dependents move away from Medicare, see, Move away from Medicare. Agents always yell at me about that, saying, Medicare Advantage is just as good as Medicare, but it doesn't function the same way. They have to cover the same categories, but not the same way. Original Medicare, again, has no prior authorization, no restrictions, no referrals, no denials like that, only Medicare Advantage. And this specifically says it right here. Dr. Alec Prucknicki, a geriatrician. Who's a geriatrician? That's a doctor that specializes in geriatric medicine. That is the aging process. He should probably know about how Medicare works, right? Dr. Alex says he works with Medicare recipients and assisted living facilities in New York. Explain the situation to the assembled crowd. These people are fired up. The doctor said, HMOs like Medicare Advantage plans might seem good if you're perfectly healthy and like the gym membership, taxi service, and other crumbs that they give you, he said, not me. He said, he works with seniors every day in the medical profession, quote, but when you get really sick, you realize that you've been, you've given them the power to determine which doctors you see, how much rehabilitation you get after a major illness, or even which hospitals you can go to. But by then, it's too late, and they have control over many of your medical decisions. Don't get seduced by the minor benefits when they can later lead to major problems. I didn't say it. Don't get seduced by the minor benefits 
when it can later lead to major problems. Again, the only complaints we've ever had in my office about Medicare Advantage are when people are sick. That's it. Access to care, access to the doctors, doctors leaving the network, prior authorization, waiting, extended periods, referrals needed, and all that. Some estimates have said that while such a plan may save millions for the city budget, cost may arise for individual retirees by almost $6,000 annually. That's because Medicare Advantage is a pay-as-you-go system. When you go into the hospital, it can cost $200, $250, $750 a day in the hospital. Even original Medicare is only around $1,400 for the full admission, but Medicare Advantage can far surpass that once you start getting sick. Quote, if these figures hold, transitioning from Medicare to Medicare Advantage would shift the burden to individuals to the tune of $1.5 billion annually, almost three times the amount the city would save. So that's what the city's doing here. They're, look, Medicare Advantage offers lower premiums in return for more threadbare coverage. That means bare bones coverage. Shifting the burden. So if you are like the other 50 million people that are on Medicare and considering what your options are, I just think, and I know I'm alone in this, you should know that there is a stark contrast between the benefit that you have been entitled to because you paid into it your entire life. That's original Medicare. Since 1965, it's been protecting seniors. And yes, it's only 80% coverage. I get that. But that's why you could go to a trusted advisor like my office and get a Medicare supplement plan that combined with original Medicare keeps your freedom, flexibility, and the ability to go anywhere you want to for treatment when you need the treatment without having to wait for prior authorization, without having to wait for a referral, without being denied. And then as we covered in the Office of Inspector General's report, 75% of denials by Medicare Advantage plans are ultimately overturned if the person knows that they can go through appeals process five layers of appeals on Medicare Advantage. Or you can skip all that and go straight to wherever you need to get to. If your doctor says you need it, you get it on original Medicare. Again, this is one of the decisions that will impact greatly the rest of your life because later on, if you went the cheap route, if you went the Medicare Advantage route for low or no premium, later decide to get a Medicare supplement plan, let's just hope you're healthy when you make that decision because outside of your initial election period, you have to qualify with health questions. Thanks for watching. Watch this video. It's all the doctors telling about prior authorization, what they feel about it, and they're asking you to get involved. So if you haven't already, please write to your congressperson or your senator. Please tell them to get this bill going so at least this part of Medicare Advantage can be corralled back into the norm so that people cannot have to wait so long to get the needed care that they need when they're in so much pain, aggravation, or getting eaten up by cancer. They need these things solved. So get involved and listen to what the doctors have to say. God bless you, take care. Prior authorization is a nightmare. It cripples my patients, it cripples my medical practice. It takes a lot of the joy out of medicine. The amount of time that it takes myself and my office staff to go through that process now for almost every prescription we write has gotten to be an enormous problem both for us and for our patients. They're spending something like 15 hours a week per physician just filling out these forms and waiting on hold for the insurance companies. Dealing with prior authorization is just a disaster disaster, both for physicians, but more so for the patients. They're put in situations where they're not sure where they're going to get their medication. They're not sure where they're going to be able to have a test. It takes time away from other patients. It frustrates physicians endlessly. I would hope that patients would recognize that doctors and patients are really on the same team, that we are as frustrated with this as they are. If patients are willing to even just sign our petition at fixprioroth.org to tell Congress that they're working with the American Medical Association to fix this problem, that goes a long way toward helping us make some progress.